Well, hey there, Mama, and welcome back to the Moms Overcoming Overwhelm podcast, episode 91. I'm Emily McDermott, and I'm here beside you on this journey as we work together to declutter your home, head, and heart. Well, before we dive into the episode for today, I just want to say thank you. Because of you, I have reached my goal of 100,000 downloads. Yay! Easy applause. <laughs> And that means I'm having a 100k giveaway. So if you love the podcast and want a chance to win a $100 Amazon gift card, here's what you need to do. So starting today, Tuesday, January 16th and ending Sunday, January 28th, I'd like you to leave a podcast review in Apple Podcasts if you haven't done so already, or If you have already left a review or you have an Android, show me a screenshot of you sharing the show. So here's the kicker. (laughs) Here's the thing that you need to remember. You must email me the screenshot to info at simplebyemmy.com to be entered into the drawing. And the winner will be announced on the podcast episode airing Tuesday, January 30th. So I'll make sure to give you some additional reminders over the next week, but wanted to let you know about that. And also that I am a part of some amazing summits coming up in January and in February. And so I have those in the show notes today. I have the Moms Who Do It All Summit, which goes from January 19th to the 26th. The Simple Change Summit with my friend Sarah from Simple Intentional, which runs January 27th and 28th. And then the Chaos to Calm Summit, which is hosted by Deanna Yates from Wanna Be Clutter Free. And that goes from January 29th to February 2nd. So you can find all the information in the show notes as well as all of the episodes that I will be referencing today. So today we're going to be talking about. 10 shocking statistics that are going to make you think differently about your stuff. So I hope this will be a fun episode. It was definitely fun researching it. So what do you say? Grab the notebook and pen and let's dive into today's episode. Hey there, mama. Are you tired of all the stuff crowding your home calendar and mind? Do you wish you could say goodbye to the endless to-do list running around in your head? Want to declutter but don't know where to start? You're in the right place. Welcome to Mom's Overcoming Overwhelm, where you will find proven and practical solutions to declutter your home, head, and heart. Hi, I'm Emily, a wife, boy mom, and simplicity seeker. I struggled to get pregnant and felt overwhelmed until I discovered decluttering could create the physical and emotional space I needed to become a mom. Now two kids later, I've transformed my life and motherhood by developing simple systems around decluttering, capsule wardrobes, kid stuff, cleaning and tidying, meal planning, time management, and more, and I can't wait to share them with you. If you're ready to reclaim the time and energy you crave, be present with your kids, and finally enjoy the life and motherhood you so deserve, let's kick overwhelm to the curb, shall we? Grab your lukewarm coffee, your notebook and pen, and clear off some counter space. Let's do this. Okay, so since I like to keep it real on the show, I just wanted to kind of set the scene in case things sound a little bit different. I'm actually recording in my closet today. Some people call it a clophis, <laughs> which I love um, because I have kids and husband home and it's snowing outside. And yesterday I actually did the outline for this episode while my kids were running around this indoor playground and kids were screaming and, you know, yeah, I'm sure you understand what that is like. (laughs) So just a little bit of grace if things sound a little bit different today, but I wanted to jump into these 10 statistics. Now, some of these we've talked about on the podcast before, others were kind of new to me. And in the show notes, you'll find each of the statistics as well as the source, because I think it's really important not to just kind of throw numbers around, but to actually show you where they are coming from. So we're just going to go ahead and count from one to 10 here. And again, I am also referencing some of the podcast episodes that might be helpful if you want to learn a little bit more. Okay, so the first one is one of my favorites to reference. It's also from a very strange place, the National Soap and Detergent Association, which I think now is the American Cleaning Institute. But they found that in an uncluttered home, there is 40% less 
housework. Yay. (laughs) And in episode eight, I talk about the four things clutter is stealing from us. The number one thing that the moms I work with focus on is their time. So if we have 40% less housework, because we're not having to move things or clean around them, or, you know, just have to get through a bunch of clutter, then this is one statistic I really love. And number two is that the average person spends two and a half days a year searching for lost items. Oh my gosh. So the most common being keys and your cell phone. I use the find my phone feature on my Apple watch all the time. (laughs) And in episode seven, we talk about why it's very important that everything has a home And that makes it a lot easier when you're trying to find things, but also when you are decluttering, it's helpful to do this because then we know that we're not getting duplicates, which is a big problem, right? So let's save ourselves two and a half days a year and make sure that everything has a home. Okay, number three was kind of a new statistic for me, I kind of had an idea of this, but the average American child receives over $6,500 worth of toys before they reach their teens. Oh my gosh. But eight out of 10 kids play with only 20 toys or fewer. Wow. Now, I don't know for my kids because they just have a ton of Legos. So I don't know if that counts as one toy or not. (laughs) Why my kids might be playing with like three toys, Legos, Hot Wheels, and then art supplies. I don't know. But it just reminded me how we oftentimes think our kids are bored and they need more stuff, but really they play with their favorites, right? And in episode 34, I go through five steps to help you declutter toys, including inventorying what you already have, observing what your kids actually play with, placing limits based upon the container concept, understanding your kid's capacity to actually manage and clean up their toys, and also experimenting with less. So definitely check that out if you have not listened to it yet. Okay, number four has to do with our closet. Very fitting since I am in my closet right now. The average woman has 103 items of clothing in her closet, but considers 21% to be unwearable, 33% being too tight and 24% too loose. Okay, so if you do that math, that ends up being 78% of our clothing we're not even wearing, which is pretty much in line with the Pareto principle, which we'll talk about a little bit later, which is that we do something that we have 20% of it, we do it 80% of the time. And for clothing, it means that we wear 20% of our clothing 80% of the time, which seems pretty interesting here since the study found that 78% of our clothing we don't wear. And I love episode 33 with Jennifer Mackie Mary from Everyday Style. I'll always remember she said that your closet should be what fits you now, not have it be a museum for what fits you five years ago, or a warehouse for what might fit you five years from now. So definitely check out that episode, episode 33, all about our closets. Okay, statistic number five has to do with the size of our homes. Now, the average size of the American home in 2023 was 2,469 square feet and has increased. I just did the year I was born to make it kind of fun, and I have a link in there, the show notes today, about where you can find the year you were born in the average size of the American home. But I was born in 1980 and the average square footage then was 1740. So that's a 41% increase in my lifetime with the average size of the American homes. Yet 36 of Americans can't park a car in their garage and 11% of Americans rent offsite storage at a cost of about $100 a month. And let's think of what we could do with an extra 1200 a year, right? So we want to make sure that we're making decisions based upon our capacity to manage things and not necessarily the size of our home. And we talk about that in episode 30, where I talk about this idea of capacity-based decluttering. 
Okay, number six, 54% of Americans are overwhelmed by clutter and 78% have no idea what to do with it. And perhaps that sounds like you and that's why you're here, which is fine. I'm so ready and so happy to help you either in the free Facebook group, which is tinyurl.com forward slash moms overcoming overwhelm, or for you can also do my coaching, which is simplebyemmy.com forward slash coaching. So we talk a lot about decision fatigue, especially in episode 19. And part of the issue with clutter is that it's unmade decisions, right? You haven't made a decision on it. And when you have no idea what to do with it, that means that you're suffering from decision fatigue. So the less stuff we have, the less decisions that we have to make and the lower amount of decision fatigue that we have. So definitely go to episode 19 to learn more about that. Okay, moving right along to number seven, the average American spent $151 per month on impulse purchases in 2023, or over $1,800 in a year. Wow. So if you have offsite storage and you're doing the impulse purchasing, you have 1200 plus the 1800 that's $3,000 in a year that we could be saving. My goodness. And values-based spending strategies can help us with impulse purchases because a lot of times impulse purchases become clutter. And we talked about this recently in episode 86 with Megan Dwyer from Money Isn't Scary. It was a really helpful conversation about intentional spending. And we're going to have another financial expert coming on Thursday of this week, which I'm going to tell you about later. So definitely check out that episode. Okay, number eight, clutter impacts our health in a variety of ways, which you probably know if you listen to episode eight, but it impacts our quality of sleep. It impacts what we eat. So women given the choice in a messy kitchen between eating carrots, crackers, and cookies, chose the cookies. And I just find that to be so fascinating and so true in my own life that I'm more likely to reach for the carbs and sweets when I'm feeling stressed out, especially in the kitchen. Okay, number nine, going back to the Pareto Principle, uh, na the National Association of Professional Organizers found that we only use 20% of the stuff within our home, and we don't use 80%, right? Going back to that 20-80 rule. And in episode 48, we talk about using that out of sight, out of mind bin to experiment with less, because if we're noticing we're not using 80% of the stuff in our house, maybe putting that aside, make sure you put a reminder in your phone and a sticky note on the box to make sure you know like when you're going to review it, and then having the courage to let go of it. Okay, and number 10, women are more sensitive to disorganization in their homes than men. So another NAPO survey, this is from 2019, found that women are more sensitive to the organizational state of their home, with 36.5% of women saying that looking at how organized or disorganized their home is, they feel stressed or completely stressed, compared to only 22% of men. And this also goes back to a study I referenced in episode eight from 2011 that showed that cortisol levels or the stress hormone levels of women that thought their homes were disorganized or messy rose and men did not have the same rise in cortisol levels. Very interesting. Well, guess what? I have a bonus tip for you. <laughs> a bonus statistic, I mean, and that is that millennials and Gen Z don't want their parents stuff. So that might be you. I think I'm on the cusp of millennial as a 1980 baby. But I definitely don't want most of my parents stuff. Maybe you're in the same boat. So think about this. If we don't want our parents stuff, do we really think our kids are going to want our stuff? <laughs> Probably not. So I don't have a hard and fast statistic around this, which is why it's a bonus one. But just thinking about as we're decluttering, like knowing that most likely our kids are not going to want stuff and we don't want to be burdening them, maybe in the way that you have been burdened by your parents holding on to all of your stuff. So there you have it. I hope that that was helpful. That can maybe motivate you to declutter, just think more about our relationship with our stuff. And on Thursday, we're going to be talking to Allie Williams. She is the founder and CEO of Financially <laughs> Focus. And we're going to be talking about values-based budgeting and simple steps to create a 
flexible budget that fits our busy lives. So I look forward to speaking to you then. Bye for now. If you like today's podcast, here's what you can do. Just take 30 seconds to leave me a review. I know you're a busy mama. You're overwhelmed, in fact, but 30 seconds of your day makes such an impact. I'll be blessed by your words. They'll definitely make my day. And who knows, you might be entered for this month's giveaway. An Apple podcast, scroll down to write a review. Thanks so much for your time. I'm so grateful for you.